Okay. All right. Do we all have this open? No. Not <laughs> so we're splitting our screen. Or people with pencil or people with paper copies, make sure you have a pencil. Okay. So a little refresher. Do you guys remember what we did last time we had class? Remember our competition we had? The winner didn't have to do the vocab? Yeah. What was it? Um, the map. Yeah, the map. What about it? <clears throat> yeah, you had to guess where the locations were of every country that they posed for you, okay? So keep that in mind as we're reading this. Um, she's going to give a little... Uh, a little heads up on something having to do with that, basically. Okay, so there are seven questions, just like you guys are used to. Um, on this very first page, hey guys, we need to stop talking. On this very first page, we're going to be able to answer numbers one and two. Okay, so number one is asking, in which country was Feruze Dumas, and that's how you say her name, Dumas, um, which country was she born in? And then number two, how did most Americans treat Dumas and her family during their first years in the United States? Okay, are we ready for this? I'm gonna stop it at the end of this page. Okay, here we go. With a little help from my friends, from Funny in Farsi, by Feruze Dumas. Memoir. Background. Once known as Persia, Iran is an oil-rich country in the Middle East. In 1953, the United States had helped to remove Iran's government and to place a shah, or king, in power. In 1972, when this excerpt begins, the Iranian government was still a monarchy led by the shah. However, seven years later, during the Iranian Revolution of 1979, the country would undergo the political upheaval the author refers to in her first sentence. The Shah would be overthrown and replaced with a government that was unfriendly to the United States. Many Americans returned the hostility. About the author. Feruze Dumas, born 1965, split her childhood between Iran, the country of her birth, and California. Her father loved to tell stories of his life, and she decided to tell stories too. She originally wrote her first book, Funny and Farsi, for her children. It was published in 2003 and became a bestseller. Today, Dumas travels throughout the world spreading a message of humor and shared humanity. With a little help from my friends, from Funny and Farsi, by Feruze Dumas. I was lucky to have come to America years before the political upheaval in Iran. The Americans we encountered were kind and curious, unafraid to ask questions and willing to listen. As soon as I spoke enough English to communicate, I found myself being interviewed nonstop by children and adults alike. My life became one long running Oprah show, minus the free luxury accommodations in Chicago and Oprah. Okay, let's actually pause it there. So number one, um, in which country was Feruze Dumas born? Iran. Yeah, Iran, Iran. So make sure you're um, turning the question around. How are we gonna turn that one around? Feruze. 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 Dumas. Dumas. Mm -hmm. Period. Good, good. Okay, we're ready for two. Number two, how did most Americans treat Dumas and her family during their first year in the US? Yeah, kind, curious, and unafraid to ask questions. So how are we gonna turn this one around? Kindness, 
curiosity. Yeah, curiosity and unafraid to ask questions. Perfect. Are you not going to do it? questions in front of you too. Make sure you're capitalizing everything that needs to be capitalized. Refer to the question like Dumas should be capitalized. Americans should be capitalized. If you're putting the United States in your answer, that should be capitalized too. You guys lost a lot of points in the I have a dream questions from not capitalizing king or putting your periods, huh? What was the second one? Yeah, that was number two. What was? Kindness, curiosity, and unafraid to ask questions. But you need to turn the question around. That's one point. Second, make sure you have some kind of annotation for this page. You can make some kind of comment about her name. That maybe the way you think it's pronounced is not the way it is actually pronounced. Maybe you learned something about the um, about Iran in the first place, their their revolution. Okay, question number three is coming up. It's asking, what surprised the young Dumas about the American's knowledge of geography? Okay, so I'm gonna play from paragraphs two till the end of seven. Here we go. On the topic of Iran, American minds were tabula rasi. Judging from the questions asked, it was clear that most Americans in 1972 had never heard of Iran. We did our best to educate. You know Asia? Well, you go south of the Soviet Union, and there we are. Or we try to be more bucolic, mentioning being south of the beautiful Caspian Sea, where the famous caviar comes from. Most people in Whittier did not know about the famous caviar, and once we explained what it was, they'd scrunch up their faces. Fish eggs? They would say. Gross! We tried mentioning our proximity to Afghanistan or Iraq, but it was no use. Having exhausted our geographical clues, we would say, You've heard of India, Japan, or China? We're on the same continent. We had always known that ours is a small country and that America is very big. But even as a seven-year-old, I was surprised that so many Americans had never noticed us on the map. Perhaps it's like driving a Yugo and realizing that the 18-wheeler can't see you. In Iran, geography is a requirement in every grade. Since the government issues textbooks, every student studies the same material in the same grade. In first grade geography, I had to learn the shape of Iran and the location of its capital, Tehran. I had to memorize that we shared borders with Turkey, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq, and the USSR. I also knew that I lived on the continent of Asia. None of the kids in Whittier, a city an hour outside of Los Angeles, ever asked me about geography. They wanted to know about more important things, such as camels. How many did we own back home? When did we feed them? Was it a bumpy ride? I always disappointed them by admitting that I had never seen a camel in my entire life. And as far as a ride goes, our Chevrolet was rather smooth. They reacted as if I had told them that there really was a person in the Mickey Mouse costume. We were also asked about electricity, tents, and the Sahara. Once again, we disappointed, admitting that we had electricity, that we did not own a tent, and that the Sahara was on another continent. Intent to remedy the image of our homeland as backward, my father took it upon himself to enlighten Americans whenever possible. 
any unsuspecting American who asked my father a question received, as a bonus, a lecture on the successful history of the petroleum industry in Iran. As my father droned on, I watched the faces of these kind Americans who were undoubtedly making mental notes never to talk to a foreigner again. My family and I wondered why Americans had such a mistaken image of Iran. We were offered a clue one day by a neighbor who told us that he knew about Iran because he had seen Lawrence of Arabia. Whoever Lawrence was, we had never heard of him, we said. My father then explained that Iranians are an Indo-European people. We are not Arabs. We do, however, have two things in common with Saudi Arabia, he continued, Islam and petroleum. Now I won't bore you with religion, he said, but let me tell you about the petroleum industry. Okay, so number three, back to number three, what surprised the young Duma about Americans' knowledge of geography? They don't know much. They don't know much about Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, or geography. Yeah, um, she compared Iran to a Yugo, which is a really small car that you guys might have not have ever or even heard of. She compared that to an 18-wheeler, and the 18-wheeler being America. Like, we're massive, lots of people around the world know about America, where Iran is a smaller country, and not many people might have known about that Iran. Okay. Um, so, what she was surprised about, though, how are we going to word this question? Let someone turn it around first. What surprised young Duma about Americans' knowledge of geography? Let's turn it around. Geography. Yeah, is that they knew very little about it. So, what surprised young Duma about Americans' knowledge of geography is that they knew very little about it, period. Ethan, put it some way. You should be answering this question right now. I'm not digging this today. Okay, we made it just just about to the end of that page too. So I'm gonna I'll give you guys a second to make sure you have a second annotation. <laughs> talk about her comparison of a Yugo to an 18-wheeler or you can mention all of the things that she was required to learn in first grade. Or the fact that her government issues the textbooks. Who issues our textbooks? Pearson. Pearson Education. Language. Well, actually, it's not Pearson anymore, it's Savas, but they have lots of different textbooks. Should have four total when we're all done. Okay, are we ready? I'm gonna play this now from paragraph eight all the way until the end of this page, the end of paragraph 15. 
Um, and we'll only have one question to answer, number four. So what joke did Dumas play on boys who pestered her to teach them bad words in her native language? What joke did she play on them? You ready? Another neighbor, a kindly old lady who taught me how to take care of indoor plants, asked whether we had many cats back home. My father, with his uncanny ability to forge friendships, said, we don't keep pets in our homes. They are dirty. But your cats are so beautiful, our neighbor said. We had no idea what she was talking about. Seeing our puzzled expressions, she showed us a picture of a beautiful long-haired cat. It's a Persian cat, she said. That was news to us. The only cats we had ever seen back home were the mangy strays that ate scraps behind people's houses. From that day, when I told people I was from Iran, I added, where Persian cats come from. That impressed them. I tried my best to be a worthy representative of my homeland, but like a Hollywood celebrity relentlessly pursued by paparazzi, I sometimes got tired of the questions. I, however, never punched anybody with my fists. I used words. One boy at school had a habit of asking me particularly stupid questions. One day he inquired about camels again. This time, perhaps foreshadowing a vocation in storytelling, I told him that, yes, we had camels, a one hump and a two hump. The one hump belonged to my parents and the two hump was our family station wagon. His eyes widened. Where do you keep them? He asked. In the garage, of course, I told him. Having heard what he wanted to hear, he ran off to share his knowledge with the rest of the kids on the playground. He was very angry once he realized that I had fooled him, but at least he never asked me another question. Often kids try to be funny by chanting, I ran to I ran, I ran to I ran. The correct pronunciation I always inform them is Iran. I ran is a sentence, I told them, as in I ran away from my geography lesson. Older boys often ask me to teach them some bad words in your language. At first, I politely refused. My refusal merely increased their determination. So I solved the problem by teaching them phrases like mankaram, which means I'm an idiot. I told them that what I was teaching them was so nasty that they would have to promise never to repeat it to anyone. They would then spend all of recess running around yelling, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot. I never told them the truth. I figured that someday somebody would. But almost every person who asked us a question asked with kindness. Questions were often followed by suggestions of places to visit in California. At school, the same children who inquired about camels also shared their food with me. I bet you've never tried an Oreo, have one. Or my mom just baked these peanut butter cookies and she sent you one. Kids invited me to their houses to show me what their rooms looked like. On Halloween, one family brought over a costume knowing that I would surely be the only kid in the Halloween parade without one. If someone had been able to encapsulate the kindness of these second graders in pill form, the pills would undoubtedly put many war correspondents out of business. Okay, so question number four. Let's go back to that. What joke did Duma play on boys who pestered her to teach them bad words in her native language? What'd she do? Say I'm an idiot. Make them say I'm an idiot. Yeah, she tricked them into, instead of saying bad words, into saying, I'm an idiot in her language. Okay, so how are we going to turn that one around? She taught them to uh, say, I'm an idiot. But that doesn't really turn the question around, though. The joke she told on the boys was that she played. Something like that. Yeah, let's say played, because the, they're asking with the word play. The joke she played on the boys was to teach them to say, and then for the words, I'm an idiot, make sure you have that in quotation marks, instead of bad words in her native language. The joke she played on the boys was teaching them to say, I'm an idiot, instead of bad words in her native language. Yeah, 
The joke she played on the boys was teaching them to say, I'm an idiot, and make sure I'm an idiot is in quotations, instead of bad words in her native language. I'll give you guys a minute to make sure you have an annotation for this page. And we just have one more. You guys are gonna have lots of time left over. Okay, so um, question five is going to be answered really soon here. It's asking, why did Duma and her family have to return to Iran? Okay, why did they have to return? We're gonna do that one first. I'm gonna play 16 and 17, and then we'll go on to 6A and 6B. Okay, so we're at 16 right now, if you lost your place, paragraph 16. After almost two years in Whittier, my father's assignment was completed and we had to return home. The last month of our stay, I attended one slumber party after another, all thrown in my honor. This avalanche of kindness did not make our impending departure any easier. Everyone wanted to know when we would come back to America. We had no answer, but we invited them all to visit us in Iran. I knew no one would ever take us up on our offer because Iran was off the radar screen for most people. My friends considered visiting their grandmothers in Oregon to be a long trip. So visiting me in Iran was like taking a left turn at the next moon. It wasn't going to happen. I didn't know then that I would indeed be returning to America about two years later. Between frenzied shopping trips to Sears to buy presents for our relatives back home, my mother spent her last few weeks giving gifts to our American friends. I had wondered why my mother had brought so many Persian handicrafts with her. Now I knew. Everyone. From my teachers, to the crossing guard, to the brownie leader, to the neighbors, received something. This is from my country, especially for you, she would explain. These handicrafts, which probably turned up in garage sales the following year, were received with tears and promises to write. Okay, so why did she have to return? Her dad's work was finished. Yeah, her father's assignment was completed. Good. So how are we going to turn that one around? Perfect. Remember to capitalize Iran. Remember to capitalize Duma if you're putting her name in there. There should be an apostrophe in fathers.
All right, are you ready to finish this? No? Are you really? Oh, I'm actually doing my stuff. I know, but are you really not ready? No, I'm done. Okay. Uh, question, or not question. Um, paragraph number 18 is where we'll pick up, and I'm just going to play it until the end. So we'll be able to answer 6A and 6B coming up here. So 6A is asking, how are Dumas relatives treated in America just a few years later? And then 6B, why was the treatment they received different from the treatment that Dumas received? We ready? We're looking for the treatment that her relatives got. My mother was particularly sad to return to Iran. I had always assumed that she would be relieved to return to her family and to a land where she spoke the language and didn't need me to act as her interpreter. But I realized later that even though my mom could not understand anything the crossing guard, Mrs. Popkin, said, she understood that this woman looked out for me. And she understood her smiles. Even though my mother never attended a brownie meeting, she knew that the leader, Carrie's mom, opened up her home to us every week and led us through all kinds of projects. No one paid her for this. And my mother knew that when it had been my turn to bring snacks for the class, one of the moms had stepped in and baked cupcakes. My best friend Connie's older sister, Michelle, had tried to teach me to ride a bike. And Heather's mom, although single with two daughters, had hosted me overnight more times than I can remember. Even though I had been the beneficiary of all the attention, my mother, watching silently from a distance, had also felt the warmth of generosity and kindness. It was hard to leave. When my parents and I get together today, we often talk about our first year in America. Even though 30 years have passed, our memories have not faded. We remember the kindness more than ever, knowing that our relatives who immigrated to this country after the Iranian Revolution did not encounter the same America. They saw Americans who had bumper stickers on their cars that read, Iranians, go home, or we play cowboys and Iranians. The Americans they met rarely invited them to their houses. These Americans felt that they knew all about Iran and its people, and they had no questions, just opinions. My relatives did not think Americans were very kind. Okay, 6A, how were Dumas' relatives treated in America just a few years later? Horribly. They were treated horribly? Okay, let's write that, but turn the question around. Dumas' relatives? In America, and that'll be good. Yeah, perfect. How were they treated? Horribly. Um, but you gotta turn the question around. Okay, we wanna make like a direct comparison. We can use what the text says, right? Like the very last sentence, my relatives did not think Americans were very kind. So like instead of the word horribly, you could write unkindly um, and then make a direct comparison to how Duma was treated, which was kindly, okay? Um, so that would be 6B. Why was the treatment they received different from the treatment Duma received? What happened in between there? Just a few years later, what happened? They had no, the Americans had no questions, just opinions. Yeah, but why? Why was, Even what happened? They had already met Dumas. What was the war? Ben? The yeah, the Iranian Revolution happened. Okay, um, and if you guys remember, going back to the background, where's the background? Um, it says, well, there's kind of a lot here, but basically America stepped in to change 
um, Iran's um, government. Yeah. Um, and the way that they had it set up did not work. So the Shah would be overthrown and replaced with a government that was unfriendly to the United States. And many Americans returned the hostility. Um, I don't know how much research you guys did with our vocab. The Iranian revolution was on there. It was part of the vocab. But there were times where Americans were taken hostage by Iranians in Iran. Um, so yeah, things were not things were not all happy between these two countries. Okay. So after the Iranian Iranian revolution happened, Americans were distrustful. Oh, sorry, I just spit. Iranians were distrustful, or no, oh my gosh. Americans were distrustful of all Iranians. It was like, you know, some some Iranians did this over there in Iran, so we're going to be distrustful of all of them kind of thing. Okay. So yeah, good job, Ben. It was the Iranian revolution that changed the treatment between Duma and her relatives coming in just a few years later. There's a Pez question also. There's always a Pez question. Oh, I'm on. Okay. I'll let you guys um, have a minute to make sure you have all four annotations. If you're doing this on paper, I don't care where they are, um, but you do need the four. Because I think you guys are like three pages in a little bit. Hmm? Um, I don't think we ever said it. Hey guys, can you stop talking? Um, so let's turn that one around. Why was the treatment they received different? How are we going to turn that one around? The treatment they received was different. Because of the yeah, because of the Iranian Revolution. Make sure you're capitalizing Iranian and Revolution. Are we ready for the Pez? Do we have all four annotations? I know. Okay, so the Pez question is really up to you guys to answer, okay? There isn't any um, particular quote. There's no particular way I want you to answer. I'm just being able to turn the question around is really what I'm gonna be looking for. So it's asking, in your opinion, do Americans have an obligation to learn about other countries? Do we have a responsibility to learn about other countries? No. Make sure you turn that question around. <laughs> and then you're gonna plug in whatever evidence from the text suits your answer. 